going to do a little bit of a review of personal safety. Um, general survival tips, uh, make sure you have lots and lots of water. Um, you can keep an eye on the weather because we can see for miles, no matter where you are in Nevada, most of the time we can see for miles and see when the weather is coming. Stay with your vehicle. It's a bigger like thing to, for search and rescue to look for if it breaks down and make sure you rest when you walk out. Now, Rant's actually gonna do a little bit of a fashion show for you. <laughs> um, to show you a little bit about what you should be wearing when you're out there. All right, I'm not actually gonna try anything on because that would be weird. <laughs> this is my number one um, important equipment is my shoes. Um, I don't wear boots um, because I have ankle issues. Um, so get yourself a good pair of appropriate shoes. Um, that's like your feet are the most important thing when you're out there. So I recommend if you don't already have a good pair and it's your first time buying them to get them from a store like REI where you can return them if they're not working out for your feet. Um, you can get a blister and come back and be like, they don't work and they'll exchange them. So it's a good investment. These are around hundred bucks plus. Um, but once you have them, they should last a long time. All right. I raided my closet this morning. So the next thing that I think is important is your head. Um, so I have a hard time with fabric hats that are solid. I'll actually overheat. Um, but I found one that works for me. So get yourself something to cover your head. And we're in Southern Nevada. So our biggest challenge is hiking when it's hot out. Um, so I invest in a good moisture wicking uh, synthetic material shirt. Um, that way it cools me as I wear it. The other thing is with some of these, if you get them wet, they instantly cool you off. So I find if I start getting um, heat, almost like an, I'm gonna go towards heat exhaustion, um, if I have extra water, I'll just get my shirt wet and it's like instant cooling. So that's super important for me. Um, some people actually prefer to wear cotton because then it actually gets wet with their sweat. Um, so again, it's personal preference, but just make sure you have something. Um, another item that I really like to have is long sleeves. So I'll have that moisture wicking shirt on, but I'll have long sleeves to help protect me from the sun, um, but this can turn around and protect you if the weather changes as well. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have adequate sun protection. So instead of just reapplying sunscreen all the time, which I'm really terrible at, I will wear things with collars and the hat to keep the sun off of me. And layers, layers, layers. This is like a thin um, long sleeve. This is a little warmer, but it works the same um, covering my neck, uh, my head, and those areas that get exposed to the sun or to the, to the weather. And then I also like to have, I'm not a big fan of hiking in denim um, or jeans because as I sweat, they start to like fall off. Um, also, um, they're not the most comfortable when you have to put your knees up if you're climbing over rocks and things like that. I prefer um, a pant. This is like a Gore-Tex pant, but it's also got some stretch to it. So it's um, water resistant, quick dry. Um, I can walk through cat's claw and other types of vegetation and not have to worry about my pants um, getting holes in them. Um, the last pair I had like this lasted me seven years. And the only reason I don't wear it anymore is because the elastic kind of went and so they're baggy. Um, this is my favorite brand Prada. Um, they make climbing clothes, but whatever works for you, just make sure that you're protecting yourself. Um, you don't want to have your pants rip open. And then a lightweight warmer layer. This is just a down jacket with a thermal reflective. So your body heat stays in, but you can wad it up real small and, and put that in your pack, especially if you're up in higher elevations. And then 
a decent raincoat. Not that it rains all the time, but this will work as a windbreaker. Um, it'll even keep the sun off of you if you need to. Um, so those are some of my favorite things, as well as a good pair of hiking socks. So something, again, to keep your feet um, dry. Um, maybe some wool so that if they get wet, they'll stay warm, um, but they'll also stay cool. So I'm a big fan of wool, even in the summertime. And that's about it for me. Well, if you guys are looking for um, a list of all this stuff uh, in, in the resources packet that I gave you, I believe there's a list of supplies that you need for both um, when you are, well, for not only what you're wearing, but also um, what kind of stuff to bring with you, which is the next one, I believe. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of introduction to my pack and what I tend to bring. So I usually have a backpack that's full of stuff. Um, and that's just so that we have everything we need should anything happen. Um, if you have a site that's really close to your parking area, then having this stuff in your car at the very least is a good idea. One of the things that you need to remember, hydration. Um, I have a really big hydration pack because I have been in the middle of the desert when it's been hot out and I didn't expect that I was going to be out that long and then suddenly I needed water. We also have first aid kits. Always have a first aid kit, but make sure every year that you update it because the medication does have an expiration dates on it and you also will probably take things out of it as you go. Um, I know I take out the band-aids all the time because the tamarisk just doesn't like me. Um, so it's always good to keep updating. Sunscreen, very useful. Chapstick's good too. Uh, I have Dranamine because sometimes when we're in the vehicles and they're shaking around a little too much, it gets to me. Um, I also have aspirin, but it's not right here. Like Rayette said, hats are really good. I have a bandana I always take with me, so that way it, this one cools me down when, I, when I'm out. Sunglasses are really important. As a professional archaeologist, I have to get, every time I get a regular pair of glasses, I have to get an updated pair of sunglasses because I'm wearing these almost as much as I'm wearing the other ones. I really love these. So hydration tablets um, are really great to have. There's a lot that are called like the noon ones that you can get and you can put it into your water bottle and it will like fizzle and, and mix up and then you can drink it and it will help you with electrolytes. But um, Jelly Bellies created this one um, where it's basically Jelly Bellies with probably salt in them and some caffeine in them. And these will do the same job as those other tablets. I like them just because, well, how often is it that you can eat like jelly beans for, you know, actual health reasons. <laughs> we have, I have a spot. So one of these, I will talk about these a little later, but it's a locating be beacon and my husband requires that I carry it with me whenever I do field work. Always have a compass. This is really good. Um, if you have a map and a compass, that's even better. Um, just in case you get lost. Medications, good too. Um, hand sanitizer. Bathroom supplies, for especially if you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere for extended periods of time. Um, we have these reflective things in case uh, you get stuck out and in the middle and it gets to be nighttime and you're trying to get emergency services and you need people to be able to see you this is really good to have it's not required though um, flashlights because we are site stewards and we are going to be taking pictures having a scale with us at all times is not a bad idea um, a whistle and a lighter and rope 
one of these things is really cool for all of that because it's got all of it in one. Um, but you can have each of those things separately as well. Uh, Multi-tool, these are really good. Um, one of the things I found, especially with the ones that have pliers, are really good for if you end up with needles of any sort in you. So if you end up with the needles um, stuck into your boots and stuff like that from a cacti, because you, ac you accidentally stepped on it, you can use those pliers to take it off. Um, if you are anywhere near jumping choya, which gets attached to you, and if you try to reach down and, and move it, your hand gets attached, and now it's, you're stuck to your hand and your leg. Having these are really, really useful for that. Obviously, a notepad is good. Um, some of the stewards bring an entire clipboard. Um, other stewards have a little tiny pad that they keep on them where they can write down all their notes and then fill out their monitoring reports afterwards. Having your reports with you, those are good. Um, and your site assignment information is really good to have. Uh, some of the stewards, or actually, some of the stewards like to have binoculars with them. Um, those are nice. And then a GPS is really good if you know how to use one. If you just buy one and stick it in your pack, it's not gonna help you. You, you kind of have to know how to use it. But we try to do as much trainings on these as possible. And um, though we have COVID, I've been trying to think of how we could do a training for you guys that is virtual. So we will get to that point. Also remember spare batteries are good for anything that needs batteries. Um, and then if, am I missing anything? I know we have uh, one of those blankets that turns into a tarp if you want it to um, in my husband's pack. Um, and that covers a lot of what I have. If anybody has any other things that they want to suggest, please feel free to put it in the, into the chat. And then, like I said, there is a document inside um, your uh, resources packet that has a list of everything that you will need, um, or at least a basic list of everything you should need when you're out there. Now I'm gonna... Okay. Other things to remember before you go, um, remember that you have to care about your car just as much as about your person. So make sure your car is in good condition before you go out anywhere. And then also have all like the emergency stuff that you need for your car as much as the emergency stuff that you need for yourself. Especially if you're gonna drive out into the middle of nowhere, whether or not you're hiking, having this stuff in your car is really a good idea. Okay, so GPS and GPS apps. Um, these, we have in the past, we, we don't require that people use GPS, I'm gonna launch a poll for you to find out how many of you guys do. Um, we have in the past, we haven't required it, but it is getting more and more useful and easier and easier to do. Um, GPS apps are now available and a lot of them are free, but there was quite a few of them that you only have to pay like three to $5 for um, and getting those and those are okay. You just have to make sure that they work when there's no cell service and um, and read about, read up on them first, make sure you're about their accuracy and stuff. And we do have a document about that um, on our website as well. And I will show you a little bit where to find that later. Um, and then they're also really good for telling us where the location of site damage is. And they can help you if you're one if you're going out and you're hiking to a new place and you need to find a way your your way back. Um, it can actually show you your track to the way back. So there's a lot of good things it's for. And like I said, Rayette and I um, always happy to teach people how to use it. And we're trying to figure out a way to be able to do some GPS training virtually. A lot of times we like to do it in person so we can show you how to actually use your personal one. Um, but I think we'll take a couple of if, if we decide to do this, or when we decide to do this, we'll probably take some of the most common ones and then use them as examples. And hopefully you guys can pick some of that up from there. Okay, so it's looking like a lot of you guys, well, a lot of you are longtime stewards um, and people who are out all the time. So I understand having a GPS. Um, 
there's also quite a few people who want to learn how to use one. Um, and I, we are, I will work on that. <laughs> I'm hearing you and I will work on that. Um, so it's good to know. All of your answers are good to know. Thank you. Okay. We're going to end that poll. So I just showed you my spot. These are um, emergency satellite locators. So what they're designed to do is to be that big red button that says I'm in trouble and I'm in the middle of nowhere and I need somebody to come and find me. Some of them require um, more information than others. Some of them give you more op options than others. Um, and some of them are um, like, some of them can only do things like they can only they can only do the emergency stuff and some of them can actually do things like you can text your family to tell them you're okay so it depends upon what they are the one thing i recommend um, is if you get one realize that you don't want it tracking you when you go to your site because that's essentially telling people where your site is so you don't want it tracking you um, via facebook and things like that so make sure that those functions are off i see on the thing it says most iphones have lat longitude in the Compass app, and that works without cell coverage. So that's good to know. And we, if you're going to give us a location, we will use locations such as uh, latitude and longitude. That's fine. It just gives us an idea of where you were. Okay. So like I said, on the website, there's actually a section called Safety and Technology, and I will show you where that is shortly or at the end of this. Um, and it will, we talk about what to wear and what to bring. And we also talk about um, all the details of, um, you know, what kind of technology and why, why, like what, what GPSs do and where you can find out more about them and where you can find out more about the, uh, the other um, satellite technology and things like that and the GPS apps. Okay, so now you guys have in your packet I'm going to share something different. You guys have in your packet. Oh, wait, I have a question first before I get started on this. Oh, in reach. Oh, somebody uses the in reach. So um, that's another one of those devices. And it is great. Um, we will. Those are I have seen them. Um, I believe they're from Garmin. Um, they're pre, they're kind of a combination of satellite thing and uh, GPS unit. Uh, Okay. Okay, so emergency packet. So this is the emergency packet. So one of the things I wanted to go over with you is what to do in an emergency should somebody get hurt, um, how to contact um, the appropriate authority. So you're gonna have your emergency numbers. Now, For all, since you're all long-term stewards, I sent out the emergency numbers to all of the stewards for their individual areas. So I'm just using Carson City District Office on this one as an example. It is not that I'm reassigning you to Carson City District Office or anything like that. First thing we're gonna do is in case of medical emergency, um, you what we would like for you to do is call these numbers in this order and you basically when you call them you say my name is and you fill in your name i am a site steward for the blm carson city district and i have an emergency and then explain what the emergency is um, if you are lost and while stewarding you have similar things um, receiving medical attention for an injury so if you your volunteer agreements that you guys have to sign every year give you workers' compensation insurance. So these numbers are the people you need to call in order to get workers' comp to pay for your medical bills. Um, and you need to do it when you're in the hospital. You don't, you need to do it before you, you know, not after you leave. And you need to tell whenever you go into the hospital and they ask you for your insurance, you say it's gonna be covered by workers' compensation insurance and contact these people so they can give you the appropriate paperwork. You contact these people and then you, they can tell you what you need to give the, you, what you need to tell the hospital and back and forth kind of thing. So um, those are good to have. And then this is the big one. So in case of severe damage or illegal activity at your site, and Logan was like, here's my phone number. Um, 
anyway, um, inter the Lake Mead Interagency Dispatch um, is the first pe people you should call anyway. And then after that, you can call these others. Um, but you start with Lake Mead Dispatch, so that way, if there are illegal people doing stuff at your site, then you can t you can report it. If you find that when you get there, it's damaged, but it, there's nobody actively doing it, um, I would still call people and I would still go through this list um, and then um, they will be able to direct you as to what to do. But this is for severe damage. Like you go to your site and it's mostly destroyed kind of damage. Um, these people need to know. And we'll talk a little more about what that process is. Um, and then there's myself and Jeff, who is the regional coordinator for this area. Okay, so then the next slide is their personal emergency information form. So those of you who never trained with me never saw anything like this, but we created this form so that way you have it on you and should something happen to you like you fall and hit your head, your partner can pull that out and be able to know any medical issues you have or anything like that. It's also good to have on you because it's going to have all the basic information you need to give dispatch that something happened while you guys are out and you need to call, give people information. So um, the first thing is when you're calling dispatch, it, it says my name is and you fill in your name and I'm a Nevada site steward for and you tell them the agency and I have an emergency, always do that. And that way they know that you're a volunteer and they know which agency you're volunteering with. Um, because a lot of them use Lake Mead Dispatch, which is in Southern Nevada. And if you are in Northern Nevada, they're not gonna know. So you need to be really clear on that one. Then um, the sites that I steward, we want you to have as much information about the sites you steward because this is for you to refer to when you're calling them and you can give them their lo your your location coordinates um, that is perfectly fine because uh, you're an emergency and your emergency is more important than the site location keeping the site location um, secret because they need to be able to come and find you. So having all this on you just gives you a quick reference that you can call, use when you start this process. Um, also having your vehicles. So even if it's not your vehicle, so let's say it's your partner's vehicle that you go out in all the time, it's good to have the information on the main vehicles you go with. And that way, no matter whose vehicle it is, that way you know, you know what, what the color is and things like that. So when they're trying to find out where your vehicles are, they will find that information. They will be able to use that information. Then there's the medical conditions, like I said, and any medications that you have, especially if you're like diabetic, um, these are, that's really important, or you have any other things that keep you alive, you need to write it on here. And that way, if you get knocked out, your partner can call and say, oh yes, and we have these medical conditions. Um, your emergency contacts are good to have too. And then the second part or the back page has all of the major dispatch phone numbers and things like that for for Nevada that we could find. <laughs> um, and so you can, depending on where you're at, you can call these. Um, Lake Mead Dispatch does a lot of them, but you can call whichever ones are in your area as well, should you need to. And then the regional coordinators and myself um, and all of our cell phone numbers um, should you have a problem. So that's supposed to be on you. So um, you can print that out and put it into, you fill it out and put it in your back pocket every time you go out or put it somewhere where you can access it every time you go out. And that way you always have that information and that will be really helpful for you um, should anything happen. Okay, so next slide. Um, Sure. Okay. So while Samantha's pulling up that next slide, um, Vicki commented that there are apps that you can get for your cell phone that do the GPS coordinates and things like that. And that is true. And I know that Samantha um, has maybe a blog post or something that's going to be coming out um, that will discuss the different apps, their pros and cons, and which types of devices that they can be used on. So I just wanted to bring that up while you're switching slides. Yep. 
Okay, so in that same packet, if you follow along with the packet, I'm not gonna switch screens again for it. Um, the next thing is the check-in, check-out stuff, and the check or check-out, check check-in. This is basically for the most most of our agency partners. Basically, what you need to do is before you go out to your site, you give your site your you give basic information to the person at home or the person you're checking out with, and say, "I'm going to be back by this time." Um, we have this document, which is in that packet. So if you keep scrolling through the, the emergency information packet, you'll see it. Um, and it's the checkout and check-in. And basically what you put on there is you tell them what your returning time is, where you're going out, but give them general locations. So when I say general locations, you, it's like I'm going to Red Rock, um, to the Southern part of Red Rock. National Conservation Area. I'm going to, you know, Lake Mead down near Searchlight. I'm going to, and that way they have a general idea of where you're at, but they don't, you're not giving them the exact location. Um, you're going to want to put vehicles down, especially if you're, it's not necessarily a vehicle they're familiar with. Um, and then you're going to put any, when I say equipment, it's a lot of the, if you have the emergency things such as my spot, um, that you tell them that, that they have that too, um, or if they have a satellite phone or anything like that, and then any medical conditions that you might have. So that way when they call dispatch themselves to tell them that you haven't returned home, they can give them all kinds of information about you. So that way when dispatch finds you, like if you need medication, they'll be able to bring it. Um, the next page, uh, the checkout chicken, um, basically, you have at the bottom there all of our uh, NSSP contacts, so all the regional coordinators and myself. But before anybody calls those, I have sent you guys um, the part of the packet that's the phone numbers. So we call it our emergency contact card. And I know I sent that out when I sent out the emergency card, emergency information for you. And those numbers, um, which I have... Um, looking at here. Those numbers are for each specific agency office, so each agency that you are working with, and those numbers will be different depending upon who you're volunteering for, so make sure you give the right ones to your checkout, check-in person, and you need to just call all of, all three of those numbers in that order when there's a problem, uh, or they, your check-in, check-out person needs to call all these numbers when there's a problem, when you haven't returned home, so that way that these people know that you haven't returned home. Now, there are a couple of areas where the agencies want you to check out and check in with them. Um, some cases like in Red Rock, they want you to do it two days ahead of time. Just tell them, hey, we're going out at this time, this date and going to this place. Um, or if you're stewarding for the Austin Tonopah Ranger District, um, since it is the middle of the state in the middle of nowhere, they want you to, they want to know ahead of time so that way they can inform law enforcement to keep an eye out for you because it is such a huge area that they can't get to you really easily. Um, so that at least they know where you're going to be at so they know, you know, which areas to be in. Um, otherwise, there's no, no way they're going to be able to reach you easily otherwise. So they've made it so that you can, uh, you should be able to check in, check out with them as well. Um, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to call me and talk to me about it and then we can clarify things. But this is important for your person at home to know so that way they can make the phone calls should you not get home. So it's, it's a good idea to do and make sure you do it before you go out every single time. Okay, um, the final note, uh, if your car gets stuck somewhere, the federal agencies, because you're a volunteer, are required to rescue you. They're just not required to rescue your car. However, in most parts of the state, we have people who are willing to go and find help you with your car, as long as you don't sue them. <laughs> so uh, if you have a problem in any particular part of the state, let us know, and we can put you in touch with people who are willing to help.